Welcome back to our channel. It's a new day with a new video and let's go check it out. All right, so we've been thinking uh, about how we can make our room better and, and just different things like that. And we're working on our Atmos setup here and we're working on a lot of different things that are kind of coming down the pipeline. Uh, but we kind of thought, you know, what would be really cool is to do a video where we are looking at other people's setups, like actually going to their rooms and setting it up. And we hit up a place called Be Normous Productions and they were happy enough to let us come by and look at it. So let's go take a look and see what's going on there. Welcome to Be Normous Productions. I'm Van Verhoeven, producer, engineer, owner, Be Normous Productions. Welcome. Come check out the place. Got a fully uh, furnished studio. Got a nice drum set for bands when they need. Don't have to bring in a drum set. Got some amps, nice selection of amps. And a separate tracking room for you, so you don't have to necessarily wear headphones the whole time you're tracking, which is nice. But come check things out. Magic happens here. Got the Pro Tool set up, my desk here. And uh, yeah, nice guitars for tracking, Evertunes, uh, so you don't have to worry about having them tune every single take nice nice perfectly tuned stuff here but yeah this is where we uh where all the magic happens all right today we're here with uh b normous um and his studio here uh i guess that's the name of his studio it's not your name right <laughs> i messed that one up um but that's just kind of the nature of my channel here we're never really um and i look super short compared to you but that's okay um <laughs> But we kind of thought we'd do a little bit of a tour of his studio here, and uh, uh, which you'll see pictures and, and video as, as we kind of go along this morning. Kind of thought we'd get kind of his backstory maybe, and a little bit of uh, what inspires him, and maybe some of the stuff that he might be working on over the next, or what he, maybe he's even already worked on. So we'll kind of just let him go here. Yeah, man. Um, it's kind of my backstory. Um, I've been playing playing music since I was in high school, since when I was uh, like 16 when I got my first guitar and, and kind of started my first band. Um, I was, uh, throughout most of my 20s, I was in a band called uh, Novus Folium. Uh, we were we were pretty popular in the Denver area. We won KBPI's Best Band in Denver in 2011. Um, got to do some really cool shows, open for Corn and Guns N' Roses and Papa Roach and some some awesome bands. Ten years, uh, we did some tours and um, did a lot of of really cool things with the band. Unfortunately, how usually big bands end up crashing down at some point. Um, our, our band broke up and at that point, at, towards the end of that band, I was doing a lot of our demoing and, and, and just home studio recording stuff before going into a, a bigger studio. So I was kind of starting to learn the production side of things and when the band broke up, it was, it was kind of my time to, to step forward with the production and doing a little bit more of learning how to, to produce and how to mix. Um, and then in 2016, I, I started taking a mentorship program with Jordan Valeria. Um, he's from Toronto and he, he uh, has a really, really cool online mentorship program mm -hmm. called uh, Hard, Hardcore Music Studio. Yep. And uh, I pretty much uh, from then like really started to learn how to do mixing professionally. Um, he's, he uh, has a really cool course where you learn like mixing from a Silverstein song that he produced right. and, and uh, kind of just learning the, the, the real pro production side of things um, and the, the pro mixing stuff that really opened my eyes to really how, how things are, are supposed to be done. Before that, I was, I was literally just putting out my, my tracking sessions as a final mix <laughs> right. and never really knew what mixing was until I started taking those courses. And um, I've been, been in that program now since 2016 so nice. uh, like seven years so, so I, you, you've come, continued it 
Yeah, I've, I'm a member, a full-time member of, of okay. the, the program, and um, since then I've actually done some work for Jordan. Um, I do some video production stuff for him, and oh, nice. I've gone up to Toronto a couple times and um, like filmed some, some stuff for him. I actually edited his most recent mixing course, okay. um, so I've got the chance to actually work with him behind the scenes on some stuff. I edited a YouTube video for him as yeah, well recently. And he's dropped some of that on, like hints of that on YouTube lately yeah we watch his channel quite a bit um, he's he's awesome he's a very very knowledgeable engineer and right. producer and mixing engineer and um for me i pretty much do everything to the t the same way he does his stuff um i, I just i don't vary too much off of of his his process because it's it his stuff sounds great and, right. and i just uh i i I love the way his stuff sounds, and, and so I, I mimic most of the stuff that he does pretty much to the T, and it's kind of where I've, I've learned all of my, my chops with production um, is, is from, from his courses, which is, which is awesome. Right so. on. Um, yeah, so you're obviously a Pro Tools guy. There's a lot of people who don't use Pro Tools, yeah. and there's a lot of people who have problems with it. Um, I've gone back and forth myself. but. Uh, Kind of, what's the journey there? Did you just pick it because you wanted something that is in, considered industry standard, or was it? Yeah, funny story. Actually, I started in Ableton Live when I was when I first started tracking, and and I had had been in using Ableton up until about I want to say like 2012, and then uh, my computer crashed on me, and I lost all of my stuff. Um, and at that point, I had a copy of, of Pro Tools. I think yeah, at that time, it was like Pro Tools Empowered, like five or something like that. And right. I was like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just see what I can do with Pro Tools. And I know this is like the standard these days anymore. And like, I was like, that, this is my opportunity where I have to, I have to buy a new software anyway. So I'm going to just... I have the Pro Tools software. I'm gonna just start using that, and that was when, when I began my Pro Tools journey. And ever since then, I've been a Pro Tools guy. I'll never go back to anything else at this point. And and for me, like with the 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 M1 and, and Apple, like I I just really barely ever have any problems. Like right. I see people always hating Pro Tools and like, crashing constantly, but like it maybe crashes on me like once a week and with autosave like it's not really a big deal right. like yeah, it, it takes a couple minutes for it to load back up and i'm right back in the session where i was before and i just know it inside and out and there's it, it's just it's just what i know and and what is the standard for for most studios anymore so if i ever do go work in another studio most of the big studios have pro tools right. so i'm just going to be really familiar with how it works and okay. like i've i've tried like figuring out other ones like logic was just like it just didn't make sense to me and i couldn't okay. figure it out and like yeah i just i I know Pro Tools, and that's that's kind of what I've I've done now for for the last like twelve years, and so I'm just gonna continue to stick with it. Right? You do you do the updates, or you kind of stuck with a version? And I kind of, uh, kind I of got stayed. the mo the two thousand or twenty twenty three version. Um, I bought the per per perpetual license um, for the the twenty twenty three and. At this point, unless they come out with some crazy new like feature, like I I'm good with with the, what I have, and I don't need to upgrade at this right. point. Like, and I try not to upgrade my Mac either. <laughs> like at this point, I'm just like trying to keep it's working great right now. Like as soon as you upgrade, that's when things start ha right. ha having things happen, problems. Get funky. Yeah. So um, so if I I. It works right now, perfectly fine with me, and yeah, I, everything that I have is is what I need in, in all my tools, so I'm going to stay with what I got. Um, I, I work with Waves, mostly Waves plugins, right. um, which again also is like one of those things where if you, you've got to pay for the upgrade, so like what I've got is works, and I don't need all any of the new features that, that come out, and right. if I do get a new plugin, which I don't really buy new plugins anymore, like what I have is what I use, and and my toolbox is, is full of what I need, and 
I don't usually go buy new sparkly plugins because it's the new thing like that. Yeah. I don't need new plugins. Like I, I use what I use and, and get get what I need out of them. And it's like buying a new screwdriver. It's like, I don't need one that has diamonds on it. <laughs> exactly. Because the exact same thing right? as the last one did. <laughs> These um, days too, like plugins are too complicated. There's so many knobs and things, like so many things that they have built into them these days that are not necessary. Like, like for me, most of my plugins are straightforward. Like they do a couple things and that's what I use them for. The right. simpler, the better. Um, that's why I actually, I love Jordan's plugins, um, Black Salt Audio. Have you ever heard of Black Salt Audio? I have. I haven't, had a, I haven't had a chance to try any of them, but I have I, heard of them. I would look into them. They're amazing. They, they have, they're, they're very simple like interface they don't have all these crazy features right. and and they do what they need to do and they do it very well um, one of the best ones is the silencer plug-in okay. um, it's for for uh, it's a drum gate and it's it's unbelievable interesting it's like, yeah i'll have to give those a try it's uh they they work real well yeah. put it on our list of of plugins that we we have to try out right and, yeah we've had yeah. a few companies send us some stuff that are like hey try this out okay I don't know when though, <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it's it's kind of cool to see you know people using similar stuff. It's like oh yeah, I've got that, right? Or no, I don't. It, it gives me something new to think about. Definitely. Um, but yeah, kind of, so what's kind of in in well, one is what is the genre of music that you're in, and then what has influenced you to do that that genre or keep keep doing it? Sometimes you, you kind of deviate from the path. Yeah. Um, I don't really pigeonhole myself into a genre. I, I do pretty much anything from from rock to hip hop to country to metal. Um, right. I pretty much do it all. Um, my my favorite kind of music is is like the the rock and and punk like pop punk and emo and and hard rock. Um, those are kind of my my favorite genres to work in. But like I've done country stuff and I do some hip hop and so it. I always say like if it's a good song, then it's a, I'll work on it. Right. Like I, I don't really care what kind of music it is. Like I I enjoy music in general all across the board and so I don't want to pigeonhole myself into a certain genre. So. Um, again like mixing is mixing like if it has drums and it has bass and it has like keyboard or guitar like it's all the same thing like i don't right. change my mixes depending on like the genre like i right. i pretty much do the same thing consistently no matter what genre it is like it sounds so like i i'll mix it the same similar way in, in, okay. in every genre cool. so yeah don't really don't really do a specific genre. I, I like to do it all. That's, that's nowadays you kind of have to do that. You kind of have to have a different outlook on on how you're doing your mixing and you're you're producing. Otherwise, you, you don't make it very long. Right. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of a lot of engineers, a lot of producers in this this state, and so yeah, if you're you're only doing one type of music, you're you're definitely limiting yourself quite a bit. Right. You know, we we get a lot of hip hop that comes through. I'm not sure why. Yeah. But we get a lot of hip hop that comes through. So I kind of understand where you're coming from there. It's like, yeah, drums, it's, it's fun to do the other stuff. It's also fun to do this other stuff as well. Um, but yeah, that's kind of kind of what I was thinking um, as I kind of do more off the cuff here because I'm pulling stuff out of my head because I said stuff in the beginning, but I can't remember exactly everything that I, I asked you in the beginning. Um, but what have been your your last few albums that you've worked on are are you doing albums even some because we're kind of in the day and age of singles yeah i i do mostly singles these days um i i've done a couple albums um but even then the albums that i've done were were this we did them single by single right. um i typically work where where i do a, a full song in a day i track full songs opposed to doing like if i even if i'm recording a record i typically do a song a day versus we're tracking all the drums today like and the reason i do that is because like it's it's way more uh rewarding at the end of the day right. when when you finish a song versus we got all the drums done today. That was fun, and all the other members sitting there playing on their phone all day, and they're yeah, like, they're, all they're bored. bored. Where, where if you you do 
a, a full song in a day, then everyone gets to contribute. Everyone feels like they did something that day. And then at the end of the day, we completed something and it's rewarding. And you're like, wow, like we got, got a whole song done today. That's so sweet. And then tomorrow we start another song and, and do the same thing again. Like, right. and so I, I do enjoy doing it kind of more in the single idea versus go, doing a, a whole record concept. Um, especially too with my studio, I, I keep things set up and I work efficiently and do things like where I've all my inputs are always set to, to their instrument and I don't change things up and so I, I work really efficiently and quickly in that realm where, where I everything's usually pretty dialed in for everything and it doesn't take long to switch from going to drums to doing bass or doing guitars and um, that way like things stay consistent mm -hmm. where if when we are tracking a song day to day like the drums stay set up and all the mics stay on the drums so they don't change and so everything's going to stay similar sound right. where where if uh like yeah it, it's like we did all the drums on one day but we did it over a course of two weeks or whatever and they right. just stay where they are um so i've done uh, a few few records in this past year um i did a really awesome record for a band called waiting till three okay. um he's a, a just a one guy that does everything um he plays drums bass guitar vocals um does it all himself and uh he's a super talented musician really enjoy his work go check it out um his two EPs that we did. Um, one's called Try Again. Okay. The other one is uh, I'm an Apology. Uh, really, really awesome records. One's kind of uh, an acoustic, more acoustic record with, with drums and bass and guitar. And then the other one's more of an electric record. Okay. Um, kind of in a... Uh, Interesting. Similar to like a, a, a older school Green Day sound. All right. Um, little bit of Foo Fighters type of sound with some indie indie rock stuff in there. So really awesome record. Um, and then a, another one that I did recently um, for the band Thrash Hard City. Okay. Um, more of a metal metal hard rock band um, that that we did a, a four song EP, uh, which was awesome. And then just recently. Um, uh, a record by the band Origami Summer just okay. dropped. They're kind of an emo post hardcore band. Um, Interesting. That, uh, again, we did, we tracked all the singles over the course of like six months and then put the record out as, as a full record where. Again, these days most of the most of the bands are releasing singles, yeah, and it's, it's what singles. I recommend because because the full records kind of get lost in the mix anymore these days. Like with Spotify and playlists and things like right. that, people aren't really necessarily listening to full records anymore. So it's like why why release six songs or twelve songs all at once, and then one song gets to be pitched to Spotify, and then. The 11 other songs that you just released kind of don't get pull much play right. and yeah, they kind of get stuck like out and lost in, in, in the mix of the millions and millions of songs out there or if you release a single like say every six weeks or so and you consistently are releasing new new music and new singles and you get to pitch each song to spotify and you get to promote each song independently right. it just gives each song more light and more more eyes and more ears on it at, at a time and then it also helps like as you release another song and they're like oh i'm gonna go check out the other songs and that read like energizes the the previous singles right. and and you just kind of keep keep doing it that way and then when when you've released enough of singles then then you can put out the whole record as a, a complete Is thought it, right after the fact um and that's kind of just the way the industry's gone these days and that's how i typically recommend my the artists that i work with to do yeah, that's, releases. that's kind of where we are in today's age is we've got all these streaming services where singles are just kind of the end end goal yeah which is fine you know you get some good quality you get one really good song you know out of your tracking that way it's like oh i blended too many things together in one day and now the vocalist is tired and it sounds 
garbage. Exactly. Yeah. No, that's that's the big thing too. Like why I try to typically do a song a day versus like trying to track six songs on vocals like that kills a vocalist like yeah. that's really hard to do like so giving each member like rest between songs is is super crucial too so that's that's one of the other reasons right. why I, I try to do more single single full full day singles versus full records where we're tracking several songs a day on each instrument so yeah okay yeah that makes makes a lot of sense uh, I've done I've done it both ways where we've done tracks all in a day and we've done it where we've done over a period of time and it's you get varying results so it seems like that would keep it a little more consistent um, in your results at least it seems to me I, I don't know if that's what you've experienced or not um, could be um, so anyways uh, as I try to think here of more things to I don't really want to make this video too much longer, or <laughs> we could be here all day and not get I, anything done. Well, I plus, you chat got, about music all day. Oh, long, you've got so. and you've got things to do as well. Do I? But um, yeah, it's it's fun seeing your seeing your space and looking at all your different things and seeing some of the same things. We have the same bass guitar here. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, I go to people's places and they like, oh yeah, we have a P bass. I'm like, oh, I see those everywhere. Yeah. So you don't see odd things um, like that. Something I do too, I do some video work stuff Wait. for my artists um, too, so that's that's something that I enjoy working on as well. Um, I do, I film, film music videos, I also film uh, live shows and concerts for bands and um, capture multi-tracks from boards and then do live uh, full mixes mm -hmm. for for my artists too. So um, something that I really enjoy doing is uh, is video production stuff too. So um, when when the, the music work isn't necessarily coming in, then I've got I've got video work stuff to do, and it also gets me out of the studio and and out to shows and. Uh, video shoots and things so it keeps things interesting I don't uh, I'm not doing audio every single day it's, right. it's nice to mix it up and do some video editing here and there and and re filming things with my camera and going out to shows and, and doing photography and um, try to mix it up a little bit so um, I, I try to do as much as I can for bands where whether it's it's producing their records or mixing or doing um, like photo shoots for their their albums or for for social media content and uh, music videos and just try to do as much for my artists as I can because I, I know how it is in being in a band and, and there's so many different things that you have to do and worry about and if you can try to take care of as much stuff with with one person it makes it a little easier for for bands and not having to spread out all the stuff all across all different people in different ways so it's something that I enjoy doing is helping helping bands do as much as as I can for them and, and okay. getting their name yeah. out for for whatever it so is. So it's kind of like a, a PR type package almost. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, to a certain way, extent. You know I try I try to kind of run things in in a way of like a, a pseudo label but not necessarily having the contracts and, and exclusive like deals with bands where where if they want to go do stuff with other people they're are welcome to uh, but I try to do as much as I can for artists under all the uh, enormous umbrella and and uh, run it kind of in a way of like a label would without without all the contracts okay yeah that's that's kind of nice to have because contracts will get you get you in a lot of trouble if you're not if you don't read them carefully absolutely um, yeah. got my fair share of trouble um, <laughs> every everybody has if you ever signed a contract you've gotten your fair share of trouble yeah um, definitely whether you know it or not uh, but yeah so as you're doing that you're kind of is that a whole package when a like a band comes in they're like yeah I'll do this for you and then we'll also you know, we'll record you we'll mix you we'll get you a video put out you know, Absolutely. Or whatever. Yeah, um, I have the pro production package, um, which would include doing a song, a music video, um, doing artwork for their their CD art, and then helping them distribute distribute it, and then um, helping them with social media content as well. Right. So um, that's kind of kind of my package for for bands. Um, 
not necessarily every band does it and and uh it's it's i'm totally cool with that if they just want to do singles and and recording only but um i do also just film music videos for bands and they go record elsewhere so okay. it's you know the the business feeds itself feeds each other like if i'm doing music videos for bands only and then eventually they're like hey like i'd love to come record a single like next time let's let's come record or like the other way around where i'm just doing singles and recording for them and then um they're like hey well let's do a music video now like so okay. kind of yeah. kind of feeds each other in in the All business right. and uh eventually like some some guys are doing everything with me and and it's amazing so um i i don't have to have to do it all but i i do really enjoy doing it and okay. being creative in any way i possibly can cool and then uh as you're talking i hear i hear thumping going across the floor which is everybody's home studio problem is people walking um so how, how do you kind of deal with the family and all of all of this kind of i'm sure that's always i know for me it's a juggle it's like okay how do i get kids to school and right and and you know pick them up from school and you know how does you know when is when is the wife coming home make sure i'm not you know you're not disturbing everybody else in the household absolutely yeah um i, I typically do most of my tracking on the weekends um or uh and when i'm i'm working on mixes and things during the week um my my kids are usually at school and um the nice part about Milliken, like our, the the elementary school is pretty close here, right. but my my kid's bus stop is literally right across the street, so they they just walk right up to the bus stop and I don't have right. to worry about picking them up from school and things. They their bus stops right across the street, so they just walk right in when they get home from school and and when they do, like I'll I'll come upstairs, say hey, what's how's it going? I've got a little bit more work to do. Come back downstairs, do a little bit more, and get ready for dinner. And, right. Um, yeah, there are some challenges sometimes on the weekends when when the kids are home, but um, they they kind of know when we're we're tracking certain things, like to try to be quiet. Yep. Um, I mean, most of the stuff that I do is is DI'd anyway, so unless we're tracking drums, like or vocals, like the those are the two things where you kind you've got to make sure to try to be quiet. <laughs> um, but even then, like with vocals, I, I track with an SM7B, which it's not it's crazy, extremely sensitive. No. Like so, so it's not picking up all the crazy background noise, anyways. And so, um, that's that's a nice part about those those SM7Bs. Yeah, those, those are a staple for every studio. Yeah, everybody should have at least one. I agree. If not, although they do make the new one that has the cloud lifter in it. Yeah, that is supposed to be more sensitive. So I don't know if that's. I've never that had one to, is the problem. I've not. never had to use a cloud lifter I've, ever. I've never I, used I've, one myself either. I've never had a problem getting enough gain out of the regular SM7B where I'm like, man, I need to go buy a, a cloud lifter for this thing. Like, right. I've never had that problem. I know some some studios they live by them and and it's like I have to have it otherwise I can't get enough gain. I'm just like I don't ever have that problem. I don't know why, but um, I, I think. I think the gain, if you're using uh, the focus rate stuff, yeah. I think their gain structure is a little higher than most. Okay. Because I use it, it with a Claret, right. and it's, I turn it up, and it's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, um, I'm, I maybe, like, when I'm tracking vocals, I'm probably right around, like, 2 o'clock, and that's about as loud as I ever have to go. Like, yeah, you, I, I don't know. Like, I, I'm never, like, crazy fully cranking the thing to get enough gain out of it and when i'm tracking like hi-hat with it like it's probably at like 10 o'clock <laughs> like it's right. not it's it's not that loud like so i, I don't know i've never i've never, I've, I've never used one myself i know a lot of people who do yeah i've never used one myself right um but they are great for um isolating out things like um air conditioning if you get exactly. air conditioning rolling or or you've got your kids running across the you know the upstairs that your living room might be above you and you have to run they're chasing each other <laughs> exactly um, i've had that where i've had to stop my kids and say guys you gotta 
They call it stealth mode. <laughs> yeah, we gotta right. go. We gotta go to st stealth mode when you're recording, right? Yep, yep. That's that's the idea. Yep. We'll go. Put, they're lucky their rooms are on the other end of the house, but um, at least at my place uh, here, I don't. You know, lay yeah, out my my, house. my daughter's bedrooms are right above here. Oh, um, perfect. But yeah. my living room's on the other side of the house, kind of. <laughs> so that that's nice. At least like they and can be go, in the go living room. With it. It's not. Well, in the summertime, they can go outside or you know whatever. Exactly. You know, yeah. The winter's a little harder in Colorado because mm -hmm. it could snow one day or it could be a blizzard or you know the blizzard one day and a tornado the next. You never know. <laughs> um, yep. Yep. So, but that's uh, that is a tricky thing to do, uh, isolating things when you have family that are absolutely that yeah. are at home. Juggling the having the studio in your own house, it it's, has its advantages and also disadvantages. But um, I, I wouldn't ever trade it for for anything else. I, I love having my studio in in my house because it just I can do work whenever I need to, and I'm home for my kids when when right. I need to be, and I'm I'm always available, and I'm not having to commute across town or or to another city to go work on stuff. Like it's it's right here for me at all times. I have a mixed revision that I need to get done at some point. I can just come down after the kids go to bed or whatever and knock out a mixed revision and, and do my work when I need to and not have to worry about having to go somewhere else to do it. Right. Can they actually hear you? Like when you're mixing down, can they hear you upstairs or is it I, pretty I do, isolated? I do mix pretty lower volume most of the time. So um, if I'm doing mixes at night, I'm, I'm not really disturbing them much really at all. Like I, I don't blast my monitors. Um, right. one of the reasons, like I, I, I try to mix at a lower volume, um, especially too, like, you know, the, the louder you've cranking your monitors and, and maybe not a perfectly treated room, you're going to get a lot of the, the, the resonance and things. And so, doing monitoring at a lower volume you don't really have right. that problem yeah and, it does uh, help so yeah i'm not usually cranking things too loud i mean everything sounds good when it's loud but like when it's at a lower volume that's when you really hear things properly and you're not you're not just cranking it all the time right so. yeah i have noticed that myself i was like hey this is this sounds good loud but we don't need it loud right um, if I'm tracking, it's loud. Like I'm getting the guitars going and bass. Like that. That's things that I I do track loud typically. But um, like when we're we're tracking vocals or tracking drums, like I don't want to get that bleed into the microphones out there. So I try to keep things lower volume. And, right. And uh, yeah, you, you deal with what you need to deal with to to get it right. Cool. And then I imagine you you guys you probably did all the build out and hear yourself yeah some or what you could i uh i had this house built um in 2016 and um the basement was kind of an unfinished floor plan um in this specific area here i had i actually drew up plans for the builders to build out for me so i had them build the walls and put in the window and um then i did all the sound treatment and stuff after right. the fact it was just kind of basic drywall um, with the like with the outlets and stuff, and then I put in the doors and um, did all the sound treatment after the fact. So the the whole tracking room is is got a, a really nice soundboard deadening board on on all the walls. Um, so it's it's super dead in in the tracking room, and then in here I've I've got just the the cheap sound form sound yeah, foam the, stuff on the walls which yeah. which it's it's not really no, it sounds really nice it's pretty here. dead in here as well um so it works it, it works for what i need and, and i get get decent quality uh mixes out of it so yeah as yeah. long as stuff translates well you, you're you're kind of golden exactly yeah, yeah that's, that's that's the main deal if it if it translates well um i don't have super high-end hi-fi monitors either I, i've got nice mid-range mm -hmm. monitors and uh those are what what's going to translate uh, yeah this sounded you know really nice we were listening to that mix you were working on there earlier and it did sounded really nice had a lot of actually was wondering if you had a subwoofer in here. i do have a sub it's uh right in here oh you got it <laughs> hidden in the thing there yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's got a cabinet over here that it's this i guess i call it the sub cabinet 
Yeah. Um, I was wondering, I was like, I don't see a subwoofer, but I feel like there's a lot more low end in here than right. those six inch woofers should be putting out. <laughs> um, yep, definitely. Yeah, go ahead and hear that low end uh, and make sure that that sits right. But um, I, I do have my, my switch to turn off my sub when I want to just hear things through through just the monitors with no subs. So that that gives me the, the ability to right. still make sure my mixes are translating properly. Yeah, I, had to, I had to get a foot switch for mine because I don't have a a switch on the actual controller. Nice. Um, they made a foot switch for it, and it actually had a port where you could plug in one. I was like, oh, I can just turn it off here. Uh, that's quite nice, but um, I do notice that you have an old Mac Pro tower sitting there. I do. Which, if anybody who has one of those nowadays, is exactly what it does, is it sits there <laughs> and becomes a nice boat anchor. Exactly. Um, or doorstop. Um, they do work well for doorstops because they got the top handles. Yes, um, yes. Yeah, I ran my my Pro Tools setup on that for a while, and then um, in like 2020, I bought my M1, and I bought it for video editing, really. And right. then eventually it was like, I, I wonder if I can run Pro Tools on this too. And it was like kind of still on the verge of where where the M1 wasn't really compatible with, with right. Pro Tools and with... with the the wave stuff and eventually like it started to come out and I'm like all right I gotta make the switch over and now have running everything on an M1 Mini like it's the best best thing ever everything's native and I never have finally. a crash finally yeah finally. There's it, a it took there. a little while for everything to become <laughs> native but now every single one of my plugins is native and and I'm I rarely ever have a problem yeah. it barely ever crashes I. I I love the, it. The only thing that's not native now is the ARA support. ARA, ARA support? ARA, so anything that's like uh, running Melodyne or anything like that okay. within your Pro Tools session, it won't uh, It won't work. I don't, on the I don't use Melodyne. Um, well, for those that do, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't work. I had um, Isotope's <coughs> Music Rebalance plugin, okay. which is a very interesting plugin. It's uh, great when someone gives you a track and you're like, we want the vocals pulled out of this. Hmm. Okay, <laughs> can you give me the karaoke track instead? So you can kind of make your own karaoke tracks with it. It's a, it's a fun thing. It's not something, but it's an ARA plugin where it'll load in and then it'll analyze in real time as opposed to hit and analyze, let it render, and then being able to play. It kind of does real time. Okay. But ARA is not supported in Pro Tool or well, on the M1s. Okay. Just across the board, like Logic doesn't like it either. Yeah. Um, Logic will do it, but you have to run it in the Rosetta. Right. I was running in Rosetta for quite a while and I it crashed way more than than uh now having it all native. It was it was like a few of the neural plugins. The neural plugins were really the last ones that took a while to become native and when they did it was finally like sweet. Now I could just oh. go straight to native and not worry about Rosetta anymore. <laughs> it was nice. It was a yeah, that nice Rosetta day layer when gets you. Happened. It'll get you sometimes. Yeah. Um, I've got a producer that works with me that he's got that problem sometimes where he runs everything in Rosetta and sometimes it's okay. Yeah. It doesn't like the interface that yeah. we've got for some reason when he runs in Rosetta, which bumps him out. Right. Um, bums me out too a little bit because I'm like, it works fine on my computer. Right. I don't have Rosetta. I'm not running the Rosetta, so. Uh, but I've got a couple of those Mac Pro towers that are basically boat, boat anchors. Yeah, I, um, I never turn that thing on. Uh, pretty much the only time I've used it recently was when I had like a, a CD that I had to like pull data off of. <laughs> that was really the only time like I've I used guess, it recently. <laughs> I guess I'll play the CD now. Yeah, like a disk yeah. drive. That was like, the, yeah. that's the thing you don't have in a Mac Mini these days. Well, they're kind of going the, the but, way, even on the PC realm, there's not a disk drive. Right. Yeah, you go to Best yeah. Buy and you look through all the computers that they have sitting on the shelf there, you're like, these don't have any... They're not necessary. Area. And anymore. those who build their own computers or dabble with it, you'll, you'll look at cases and the cases don't even have a support to put one in. Right. There's yep. just, it's just a flat front and you're like, oh, I guess... Um, I actually bought the, uh, the external one that plugs in USB. Okay, yeah. There's times where I've got to play a CD or something. Right. Or burn a CD. That's... That's the other thing. Yep. Yep. Not not something we come across very often not, anymore. Not very often. Um, so when you your deliverables, when you send someone, 
this something I use in like Dropbox or? I use a really awesome file sharing service called Sampley. It's a great um, sample. Amazing. They're, they're kind of a startup uh, independent company that I, I absolutely love. I, I use them for, for all of my file delivery, all of my, my mixes I send out with that. Um, my mastering engineer uses it as well. Um, and then I have all my portfolio stuff is on mm -hmm. there too. So my website, it, that's that my portfolio on my website is Sampley as well. And uh, the, the best thing is like, they have a really, really good free service. Um, mm -hmm. I, I have recently upgraded to their paid paid version so I can enable and disable downloads. Um, but even just for their free service, they give you like 50, 50 gigabytes of space. They've, up, they've and, updated because it was 25 for a while, like, which was still a lot. It's a lot for music. <laughs> like uh, So, yeah, that's what I use for all my, my delivering of mixes, um, even with my, my mastering engineer. I just send them okay. the link. and um, I, I do have Dropbox. I use that for my video work. Um, but but for, for audio, I love Sampley. It's awesome. Have you, have you tried Sampley for receiving files? Yes. Yeah, yeah it's a I, great feature. I, I use it what, myself for that. Yeah, I have. It's a nice. They just send, They can just upload everything right to that, and it's all right there instead of having to worry about Google Drive and Dropbox. Like it's it's a nice little feature to have as well. Yes, I, I love Sample. I've used it since they started. Yeah, me too. Um, but I've always paid for it because there's a couple of the podcasts I follow that really like. Hey, we're a partner with them. You can get a discount. Nice. So I pay like. Eight bucks a month. Like, yeah. I don't think I've paid more than that ever. Right. That's what um, I pay too. It might be ten now. They may have upped it because they're doing some updates that are pretty cool. Um, with the yeah. the whole uh, being able to uh, check it on like have Spotify like level type levels. Oh right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. The or or title or or Apple Music whatever you use you can kind of click that and when they hear it they can hear oh this is how it'll kind of sound when it hits Spotify or whatever. Right. It's kind of neat software. Yeah, yeah, they got they keep updating their their stuff too, and they're always coming out with new features. And and the nice thing is like they're very small, so you can literally just send a message to the CEO and they'll respond to you in like a I, couple hours. I had to do that with some issues I was having with it. Yeah. Um, because I was on a beta for their uh, their mobile app. Yeah. I, and it I was being it was being tricky, and I was like, I don't know what's going on here. It's not loading, and it, or it's not deleting. It was doing something I didn't want it to do. Right. Or something I it's wanted cool. to do. It's cool. You can send a message to them, and they'll yeah. usually like respond real quick and be on it. And yeah, they're like, and yeah, always press, recommend features. Press to these them. three buttons, and it'll fix it. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they're getting on there. Uh, I think they're working on a Windows version of a desktop app. They have a Mac version of the desktop app. Okay. Which is really cool. It yeah. just lives right on there in your desktop. You don't have to desktop and you don't have to go through a browser. Okay. Um, it's yeah. really quick. You just hit it and just you're nice. there. Um, but Sampley is nice because anybody can open it anywhere. Right. Exactly. And it's lossless audio. So you don't have to yeah. have a degraded version of the mix, which Dropbox if they've gotten some, better. does something with the audio, it changes a little bit. When <laughs> They've gotten better, but it's still not great. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, they're they're a great great company. Um, I haven't heard of a lot of people locally use them, so you're you're kind of the first. Nice. Other than myself. Yeah. Because I send it out and people I, are like, what is this? <laughs> I you're the yeah you're besides my mastering engineer, you're the only person I know that I've heard that uses it. Also. I got well, I got tired of Dropbox sending things via Dropbox, and then people were like, well, it won't play, or it won't do this. I can't download it. Like, yeah. I wanted a player that I could just send, and you can just hear it. And yep. then sample. I was listening to um, Working Class Audio podcast, um, and they were like, "Hey, you get a discount on this thing, Sampley. If you haven't heard of it, like, I'm gonna go check that out." Actually, I was in the carpool lane at my kids' <laughs> school, and I was like checking it out on my phone. Um, Hell yeah! That's a cool piece of software. Definitely. Highly recommend it. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm trying to get a lot of the producers I work with to use it, but they don't always want to. I'm yeah, stuck. Right. Um, if they could do a video version, uh, I would be a lot more happy. I might have to recommend them to do that. That would be so nice. You guys do like a, like a video version of the software. Right. Lots of a lot more happier. I would. 
I would be happy about that too. <laughs> That's the only if thing. If I, I could have... get rid of Dropbox, that'd be amazing. <laughs> I use I use Dropbox for archival. That's it. Yeah. It's just that's where everything goes to archive. Um, yeah. Because there's times where people are like, "Hey, I need this one thing from ten years ago." <laughs> right. And I'm like, "That drive died like three days before you <laughs> called me. Um, I don't have it anymore. I can see if I can find it somewhere." So if it lives in Dropbox, it, it's okay. I mean, right. Yeah. But it's that's the problem. Do you have an archival type plan with your drives here, or are they just kind of? Um, I I do have a bunch of backup drives that I've got all my my archive stuff on. Um, I've I've recently been slowly trying to get all that in order and. Now that I've done a lot of work over the last couple of years, it's definitely something that I where I probably need to get everything uploaded to Dropbox as an extra backup. Definitely, but I've got redundant like hard drives with stuff on multiple. Right. But yeah, hard drives are expensive and it takes a lot of, oh, yeah. lot of room, and they do fail. So yeah, I've got I've got a stack of them. Yeah, you know, I actually have a Mac Pro that I hasn't been on in a while. But I need to turn it back on so I can back up it. But I had it set up as a giant NAS backup. Yeah. Because so, you can put like four or five drives in it. Right. And I had like 12 terabytes in it. I was, I was using that as kind of a backup. Nice. But um, having the cloud is a lot nicer because it's just there. And there are services yep. that do that. But right. I don't know. I'd rather just do it at the end of the day. Just, okay, I know it's there. I don't have to guess. Yep, exactly. They do drive, and and solid states are worse when they drive because they just they die. They just die, and then there's all of everything's done. Right. So. Yeah, it's uh, it's, I've had a way back in the day, I had a hard drive crash, and I lost everything, and it was a sad, sad, sad day. Yeah, you lose a you lose a client um, or an artist or whoever it is project because the drive crashed. It's it's a little daunting. Like, it's that's a, the worst day ever. <laughs> I might be able to get it back if I take it to a data recovery center. Right. But that could be a month. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so I've had a few people come back and retract stuff because of that. Yeah, that's a bummer. It's it's no fun. Nope. Um, but that's kind of all I've got for, for today. We could continue nice. on forever and ever and ever, but. Uh, Obviously, we both have things that we have to eventually get on with the rest of our days with. Exactly. Um, so. Well, thanks for coming over, checking things out, man. I, I it's really been enjoyed fun. talking. Yeah, it's it's been a fun day, a fun um, experience to drive out here. I never never think of ha there being a recording studio in Milliken. Yeah. Um, I grew up in Kersey, which is not too okay. terribly far from here either. Um, so well, that's I say terribly far. I think it's another like. 30, 40 minute yeah, drive. 30, 35 minutes up to But uh, I used to drive through all the time and I never thought about having studios be out here. It's like, oh, right. bigger towns. Maybe Greeley. <laughs> Maybe, you know, Dem definitely Denver. Um, yep. You know, Boulder. You know, some of the college towns maybe. Right. So it was like, oh, he's a Millican. That's, that's very interesting yeah. to, my, to my brain. Uh, <laughs> and I haven't been to Millican in probably 10 years. Nice. So. Yeah. It's nice and quiet out here. I, I I really enjoy it out here. It's a it's a nice place to live. I grew up in Longmont and um, bought a house out here. And, and I at first I was like I don't know about moving to a small town like Milliken, but I really like it out here. And this neighborhood's really nice for for the kids and all of my kids' friends live in the neighborhood. And right. it's, it's just really really nice little community out here. Yeah, it's kind of kind of where we are in Loveland. It's. We're on the very far edge of Loveland, so we're not really in town. Or it just kind of has that smaller feel. Kids can run around the neighborhood if they want. Yeah. You don't have to worry quite so much. Exactly. Definitely. Well, awesome, man. Cool. It's been fun. Uh, watch more of our videos if you get a chance. Definitely. Those guys, too, out there in the video land. In YouTube land, they can watch them, too. Um, but we dig the content that you've been putting out and the horns that go off. <laughs> Everybody's phone goes off. Um, I put mine on vibrate the other day and it rang through my computer. And I was like, <laughs> dang it. <laughs> I forgot that it does that. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, thanks for letting us come out here and kind of check out your space and talk a little music with you. And um, 
we'll be getting on with the rest of our day. All so, right. Yeah, that's what I got. Sweet. So that's his space. It's kind of cool, right? And uh, I really loved talking with him and just seeing the different things that he does. And we even talked an hour beforehand uh, to get to the point where we thought, hey, let's shoot a video. We should probably be filming this. And uh, it was great just to see his space. I can't uh, believe that someone allowed us to come and film their space on for our own channel. Uh, we want to do more of that, so uh, keep on the lookout for that. Also, we have noticed something, something great. A lot of you watch, like, and subscribe aren't actually subscribed. The ones that are subscribed, we absolutely love you guys and keep watching our content. Those who watch our stuff and like it, hit the subscribe button. Uh, it helps us out a lot and motivates us to do even more content. Uh, so that's kind of what I got for you today. You know, go make some music and we'll see you next time.